All right, so before I even start watching this video, some context here. Uh, this guy originally made a Snowbreak video, and he gave Snowbreak a 7 out of 10. A 7 out of 10 right here. Right here by my head. 7 out of 10, which is fine. I, you know, that's okay. I don't mind a 7 out of 10. But then he gave Tower of Fantasy a 7 out of 10. Now I was pissed. As someone who has played both games, how dare you? But whatever, it's just his opinion, man. He gives a lot of things 7s out of 10s, actually. 6 out of 10 for this, for whatever. Whatever, but anyway, uh, he came back to Snowbreak. Hence, probably like the huge spike in popularity that it's gotten. Yeah, 6 months later. So, we're gonna watch this. 7 out of 10 is average now? I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, uh, people told me they wanted me to watch this. They were going to watch it. There's an unreliable source. Dude, people can make whatever YouTube video they want, have any opinion. It's fine. I hear about Snowbreak opinions on the daily basis. Some people take it seriously. Some people don't. Some people just see titties and think, oh, this is peak. You know, whatever. Snowbreak is a lot of things, okay? Anyway, let's uh, let's watch this. Let's watch this. Let's see what this is about. Solid game with lucrative assets and a lot of cultural significance. About half a year ago, I reviewed it in the first volume of the Atrocious Gotcha Review series. Since then, a lot has changed. Not only did it make a surprise comeback from the brink of being shut down, the amount of influence it's had in recent times is staggering. From having its music featured in the Olympics, to when any gacha game introduces an interactive dormitory mode, it's often referred to going as the Snowbreak route. That's right, guys. That's right. Snowbreak invented women. Snowbreak invented fan service. Everything. It's it was never a thing before. But now that now that games are doing fan service, Snowbreak route, brother. That's right. That's my game. <laughs> it's so it's so weird. Like who started this trend? Who started this? Who who called things the snowbreak route? The snowbreak. Who did this? I can't. It's such a meme, dude. I can't take it seriously. Oh man, you had a beach episode. You had a summer event. The snowbreak route. Oh my god. <laughs> what did it do to make a counterplay of this degree? And what can we learn from it? My name is Psyche, and let me tell you about why snowbreak containment zone deserves its success. Well, I didn't think Let's I'd see. be logging back into the game after half a year. After being greeted by the returning player event, Ooh, I wanted to see what's different. Now, if you haven't seen the original review, I suggest watching that before this one, as you may not understand where my original opinions of the game came from and how they may have changed. Back then... Wait, hold on. He played this game... Wait, 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 wait. He played... He reviewed this game when Cat was out? That's right. That's crazy. He reviewed this game when Cat was out, and that's like the point of when the game pivoted into its success. Like, Katya changed a lot. That's crazy, man. He picked, like, the, the wrong time to review the game. Like, the, the most awkward time. Anyway, though. That... And I didn't have as much experience playing gacha games, so my opinions were not as informed as now. I'm so Since jealous. I, def... I wish I had no experience playing gacha games. See some moments where I was so jealous. To judge it. Addressing okay. the behemoth in the room, Snowbreak has had a huge tone shift since its launch over a year ago originally advertised as a post-apocalyptic 3D shooter, now has shifted more into the shameless side. Dude, Amazing CSUN games went... I still clothing. can't believe... We don't need that I, I still here. can't believe it, dude. Like, the new version Girl trailers, Cafe the Gun had so much fan service the, the, the game before Snowbreak, and they just went back to the old world liable. One of the main attractions that and it just worked out. Snowbreak back on the map is the introduction of the animated skins, costing around $20 each. Even for content like this to the typical gamer, $20 <laughs> still seems like a high price to pay for a cosmetic item. But here's the thing. When compared to the general gacha market, the price is actually not that unreasonable. Genshin's $20 skins do not offer any new voice lines or animations. Dude, why are skins so expensive skin nowadays? Gacha, and most of the time, it will cost $60. That's right, Nikkei's, do Nick Nikkei's dollars, Nikkei's skins are so- Why are skins so expensive? Like, they're- they cost as much as a whole new game nowadays. Skins didn't used to cost this much back then. I guess because of the new voice lines and stuff. 
Something like this was unseen <laughs> before, and before long, some other gachas started implementing similar tactics. $20 for a cosmetic item that adds this much is, well, I probably still wouldn't buy it, but... <laughs> Same, but I have to buy it for the content. I have to. I'm locked in. I don't even care about the interactive scenes, dude. I don't even care about them. I don't. But I have them. After taking a look at everything else, it does look good in comparison. Snowbreak, despite being released in 2023, still had the advantage of being one of the few that went the 3D route. If I asked you, name five 3D gacha games in 2023, you might have some trouble counting them with your Tower of Fantasy? Is it like release games? Tower of Fantasy? Genshin? Weathering Waves? EGR? Honkai, Honkai Star Rail counts as 3D? I don't think that's hard at all, I don't know. Unless he means, like, I don't think that's hard. Lots of games are doing 3D nowadays. Fingers. Life 2D has been fairly prominent in the industry before that, since they're low weight enough for most phones to run the game smoothly. There's Correct. always been fan service in gacha games, but nothing quite embraced it fully as its identity. So much so that for the main character, there are marriages that's actually canon. Still gotta buy the wedding skins, but getting married for 20 bucks is pretty good value. Yeah, man, that's that's pretty cheap for a wedding. While you might think that relying on fan service is a cheap tactic, I think there's a bit more than that. Snowbreak found a gap in the market, a high quality 3D shooter that heavily leans into the fan service side and capitalized on it before the huge wave of 3D gacha games coming in 2025 because everyone and their mother had the same idea of going the open world route. At first, the game spelled trouble when they announced the end of the English voice acting. Global is usually the first to get budget cuts as global gacha fans typically consists of the smallest player base and revenue compared to Asia markets. It's true. Not to mention, it seemed like the game was on a- But hey, last month we were very similar. CN and Global were pretty close. It was kind of a dead month though. It was pretty dead. Um, but Global and CN were pretty close last time. Of course, CN, um, CN was still higher, but It's last yeah. likes when it ran a summer event during the winter hoping to rein in an extra dose of cash by releasing some swimsuit cosmetics. Dude, what I can't believe is that they released this, they released the summer banner, and it didn't work. People talk about the snowbreak effect, and how, oh my god, the Gunner skins will work. Brother, they had a beach episode, and it didn't work. That was it. They even had the summer event early, right? And then you're telling me Katya comes out, and it's like, oh wait, hold on, now we see the game. I, I, I don't get it, man. This should have been the patch, right? This should have been the snow brick route that people talked about, and it wasn't. I still can't believe, of all characters, Katya was the one. Katya was the one to pivot the entire game into a different direction. It's, that's crazy to me, but this is proof that Snowbreak was always going to do fan service. They were always going to do it. They didn't just like change it on the dime. The game production doesn't work like that. There's a lot of things they have to change. Of course, maybe now they're going full Gunner and adjusting things to fan service. Sure. But in the first year of Snowbreak, it wasn't like that. Like, they just had that planned out, dude. Even like the Shirno and Enya banner. Uh, it was ready in 2023. You can even see the dates of when it was ready in the trailers. So it's not like, oh, fan service worked one time. We're going to lean into it, you know, heavily. It Like, Snowbrick was going to succeed one way or another with what they had laid out in the roadmap. They didn't change what the roadmap was, like internal roadmap, right? They didn't really announce it. But with what they had in the oven, they were going to succeed regardless because what they had worked, right? Maybe it was like the best time and place because of the whole girl front line stuff. Maybe it was a time and place kind of deal. Sure. Maybe that's what happened. But still, can't believe that this patch didn't pop off. The shift in the game's vision didn't happen suddenly. But if you go back and watch each version's trailer, you can see CSUN Games' slow descent into madness. Now, the new direction isn't without trouble. About a month ago, the game was caught with a wave of censorships. And for whatever reason, the global server was affected too, despite not needing to comply with the same laws in China. The other you can see him like complain about it. You can uncensor your game though. Point of major contention was the removal of male logistics officers. The logistics are literally just static PNG files with a bit of lore attached. Season Games decided that it was for the best as an indie studio to replace all male officers with female ones in order to avoid potential drama. 
The idea is that since Snowbreak is very clearly designed for a male audience, Chinese players feel there should never be a reason for a female player to start the game, fearing that they may spread idea something along the lines of radical feminism and Jesus Christ. Ugh. It's yeah, yeah, whatever. Advocate to shift the direction of the game to something the majority of the players do not want. Now, gender politics is not something I want to touch with a 10-foot pole. Thank but God. The reason I make gaming videos is that I don't have to talk about politics. A debacle like this could potentially harm player trust and reputation of a game, especially in the Chinese market, but maybe that's a story for another time. In the end, the redesign of the logistics will eliminate any suggestions or notions of... CYA. CYA policy. You guys know what that means? It means cover your ass, right? I work in HR. That's what we call it. Cover your ass. Get the documents just in case. Put in the filing cabinet in case something ever happens one day. CYA. And if they have to change the dudes to be females, sure, I get it. I think it's kind of weird. I think it's so small, but sure. I guess it's <laughs> whatever. I don't even look at these logistics, dude. I don't even look at these half the time. They're just again, just PNGs, but whatever. Someone out there cares about it. Romantic interplays or rivalry between the waifus in the game in any male characters that is not the playable protagonist. What's that? Leo here is a die hard fan of Fenny? That's a no no right there. <laughs> the result was that all servers, yeah. even global, were affected by this change. So yeah, now you can enjoy the true harem experience. The rise in popularity and revenue is one thing, but how did the game improve the last time I reviewed it? Not much. <laughs> no, I'm joking. They, they improve at a snail's pace, honestly. They do do some, like, soft improvements over time. It's nowhere fast, though, especially when they're putting all their work into, like, the character designs and skins. And I'm not going to deny that. I'm really not. To some people, that's enough, though. Some people appreciate how the game doesn't take much of your time. Log in, do your dailies, log out, maybe you have something new to do. They're improving at a snail's pace, and I know they're putting most of the work into the skins. Sure, that's fun. Well, let's start with the presentation. Events and main story chapters have 3D cutscenes now. Even though the live 2D scenes are not voice acted, the 3D moments do. I was able to go through some of the event story during the last week of the 2.1 patch, and I was pleasantly surprised. Even here, fan service elements feel shoehorned into almost every aspect in the game, except it's fine because of the ridiculousness and the lengths that it goes to fill every frame of your gameplay with booba, ironically makes it feel not out of place <laughs> at all. It almost reminds me of how Nikkei was originally marketed back when it released. The gacha is the next thing to get a slight revamp. There are now two types. Oh, that's right. Duh, I probably should have mentioned that they have the 100 banner. So that way it doesn't do any mental damage to people. Having the 100 guaranteed banner doesn't do mental damage. So you don't have to worry about losing your 50 50. I personally just, you know, either way, I think it's the same rates no matter what. One's just guaranteed and one's not. Of banners. The classic 50 50 one with the second rate up guarantee and a base 0.7% drop rate, 80 pity, and the new type where the rate up character is the only SSR in the pool, but the drop rate has been severely gimped to a measly 0.1% with yep. a 100 pity counter. Now, in case you're someone that's still debating which one is better, let me just point that any gacha system where you don't have to deal with a 50 50 system is way better in comparison. You always roll this banner. This follows in the footsteps of punishing Grey Raven, as if the UI didn't follow it already. The reason why the 100% banner is better is because if you look at it, the worst possible scenario for each type of banner is 100 versus 160. I know soft pity exists and that's going to skew the numbers a little bit, but when you roll- So the soft pity actually makes it so both banners are even, which is probably why he doesn't know about this, which is fine. Um, but the soft pity, because it's way early on soft pity on the 50-50 compared to the 100 banner. Uh, e equals the same. Like, no matter what. Between the 50-50 banner and the 100 banner. Now, even Vikyush has a whole article on this. It's, it's the same rates. But again, one just does less mental damage to you. Because who wants to do a 50-50? I personally roll on the 50-50 banner because content and it's more fun. Um, 
but it's the same no matter what. It's not like secretly a better banner or more value because you still have this 165 crate here that gets you a different SSR that's random. It's the same thing. But again, people prefer this one way more. So good for them. That's good. Like gotcha banner, you want the rate up character. You don't care about anything else. Not only does the guaranteed banner have a lower cost ceiling, it also makes your pull plans very easy to calculate. With the 0.1% SSR drop rate, yes, you're very likely going to be hitting pity almost every time. But since you already know the ceiling, you know that if you save 16,000 of these uh, lean crystal things, you will guarantee a copy of Vidya. Instead of jumping through mental gymnastics, calculating how many more crystals you need if you lose the coin flip and etc. Look, I got a copy of Vidya. You'll get more in the 50-50 banner, but you may not get the ones you want. No, you get the same amount of 5 stars. You get the same amount of 5 stars. 50, 50, or 100. It's the same amount. Media 12 hours before the banner was up. MiHoYo used to do this with their older games, specifically Honkai 3, but they've abandoned it since in favor of the coin flip mechanic. I also compared its rates and gacha systems to be eerily similar to Genshin's. But now I don't really have a problem. The point is not to copy how to monetize the game, because they actually did take the time to improve on it. Rerun banners have also gotten an overhaul. Two rerun candidates are now selected. Oh, thank God time, they did this. Which reduces the amount of waiting each player has to do before yeah. snagging a copy. So two will be running simultaneously. We get so many rerun banners, one. dude. We get a lot. This uses PGR's rerun system too. It's like they're copying all <laughs> We the get good so ideas. many. It reduces FOMO, and I think Mihoyo could learn a thing or two. Because over there, it's possible a character doesn't get a rerun in one and a half years. What? Further improvements is the weapon. Is that wait what? How many characters does Genshin have? What? You're tell wait, hold on. You're telling me that if you miss a character in Genshin, you may not see him until one and a half years later? Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's That's a lot of characters. What the hell? <laughs> huh. Okay, I did I did not know you that. You can get four or five star weapons in Snowbreak unless you specifically roll on the weapon banner. I think Withering Waves has a very fair system in this regard. Not only are four star weapons able to spook you in the character banners, any standard pulls can be used towards a selectable five star weapon. That's really but good. Let's be honest here. You don't want any of the standard characters. You'd rather spend your freebie tokens on weapons instead. Moving on to something else. One of my biggest complaints at the time was the logistics system. You can farm the logistics via one of the farming nodes, but one of the biggest issues is that the game also did event exclusive logistics sets. These are equipable gear that comes in three sets of pop that's tucked yep. away for sale in the events shop. They also have RNG substats, so I yep. thought it made no sense restricting the player from farming them when it's possible that you get unlucky and you're stuck farming them because you just haven't gotten the oh, right FOMO. substats for your build yet. <laughs> Except if you're not done by the time the event expires, the set becomes unavailable to farm. At the time, there was no mechanic or rerun event that lets you go back. Yep. So when I pulled Kadia at the time, I literally just couldn't farm her best in slot logistics set. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> that, that sucks. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I remember that, dude. I'm so happy they changed it. That was so dumb. That was so dumb. Why would you make FOMO artifacts? Because the patch was over. Well, I'm glad to announce that this problem has been mostly resolved. There is now an additional tab in the materials farming node that allows you to select a limited logistics set and when you get enough currency, lets you exchange for one of the three officers in the squad at random. Ah, sweet fulfillment. But here's where they do even one better. Each patch also came with a free purchasable 4-star weapon. Same as the logistics, it would disappear into the ether once the event ended. Now, there is a step- Dude, there are people who got Katya and didn't get her event weapon. And there was no way to get her event weapon, so you were stuck with like the green weapon they give you? The green uh, crossbow? Dude, like Katya being the poster girl of Snowbreak, getting all the new players in here, all the new players, right? Just to pull for Katya or re-roll for Katya, only to not get her weapon? Brother, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty bad. <laughs> that was
<laughs> so unfortunate. Separate farming mode where you can farm the currency to exchange for a past event weapon that you missed. That's just nice. One other aspect I think that sure it costs more stamina, but it's like it's still there, you know. Game could have improved on is the variety and events. So I play shooter games from time to time, mainly Helldivers 2 at the moment, but I generally prefer when enemies are not bullet sponges, which probably explains Me why too. I couldn't get into Destiny. Anyway, during too. my original playtime, I felt that there wasn't enough variation other than shoot enemy until dead goals when it came to activities. There were some game modes like tower defense, and I understand that the non-open world design can limit creativity a little bit, like how you can't really do parkour obstacle courses without coming up with a whole new map. I mean, I'm not discounting that could have been my fault for not properly building out my operatives. Not really. I mean, again, it was like the whole FOMO thing. I mean, I still don't know how rotations work in this game. But if you enjoy spraying lead all the time, then there wouldn't be any problems for you. There's also a couple new activities for each event cycle, not to mention some light puzzles or parkour sections during story campaigns. I realized that given the smaller scope and budget for the game at the time, it wouldn't be fair to compare it to the massive titles. Scheduling for each event pack. I mean, that's that's also true. That's something I have to remember, dude, is that all of this is a mobile game. Like, you think of all the biggest shooter games out there, and they're on PC or console, you know what I mean? Like, Hell's, like you just mentioned Hell's Divers, right? Hell Divers. So it's kind of like something we have to put into perspective of, of like you can you can compare this game to other shooters, but those other shooters aren't on mobile. You know what I mean? And yeah, I get kind of annoyed too when enemies are just bullet sponges. I get it. And then maybe that's just a limitation of mobile too. But I guess that's their main point is that they want it to stay a mobile game because that's going to do better for them. There's so many shooter games out there that are really fun. And compare the snow break, I mean, they blow them out of the water. Trust me, I get it. But I guess, you know, deep down, that's the main point. It's just, it has a, it is a mobile game, it has its mobile limitations, and they're going to keep it that way. Patch has been I mean, that's why they've, they've nerfed so much shit, right? ...reduced to six weeks instead of every seven. It's worth mentioning that when I first reviewed the game, the gap between patches was still seven, but was changed to six literally the next patch after that. <laughs> six weeks does seem to be the norm for a lot of modern gacha games, so no complaints there. So, six months later, Snowbreak has changed a lot. Not only did it forge a new cultural identity, the aftermath of the rise in popularity has allowed them to secure a solid foothold in the gacha industry. It's a rare occurrence. Not a lot of these mobile games get a second chance. It's true, man. Like, Snowbreak getting its second win is very rare, right? People are so quick to assume a game's dead or dying, move on to the next game. We were PvPing with so many people on Discord, game gonna die kind of thing. Well, nowhere to be seen now. Now, that's all fun, but I myself probably still won't be playing this game. Uh, bad video. Horrible video. We won't be... No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm personally just not really drawn in by the gunplay. Plus, most of the best skins that the game is known for are sold for real money. I mean, if I can't have it, then I don't care. Anyways, that's just a <laughs> bit of my subjective take on the game. Don't listen to what I say, though, because after a losing battle, ultimately, I can safely say, Snowbreak indeed deserves its success. So let me know if this video has somehow convinced you to dive into the degeneracy of the game, or what you think as an ongoing player. If you wish to see more gotcha related content- It's not that degenerate, right? Right? It's not that degenerate. It's... It's not that degenerate. It's, it's, it's still a pretty wholesome game, dude. It's, it's pretty wholesome. It's, it's very wholesome, dude. This, this game is got family, you know, like very good ethics and Why does her toes wiggle when you touch them? <laughs> what is this? Okay, maybe he might be on this something. Um. Anyway, yeah, that was a pretty good video. I like it. I'm I'm always happy when there's more snow break videos. Always happy. I'm going to like, sub, and I'm going to say, um, snow. Peak Gunners send their regards. Okay. Good video. I like it. This guy's pretty cool. This little pig to the market. Oh my god. Alright. That's gonna do it for this video, guys.
I'll see you in the next one. Take care.